what are your thoughts on this upcoming series with the Lakers and Denver Nuggets? I think this is going to be a really good series. I think this series is essentially going to come down to a few factors. You know, I think whoever gets the majority of these factors on their side, they're going to move on to the NBA Finals to represent the Western Conference. I mean, first things first, we got to cover Nikola Jokic versus Anthony Davis. This is going to be the premier matchup in this series because when you look at both of these guys in particular, Nikola Jokic and Anthony Davis have respectively, respectively been the best players on their own teams. And Nikola Jokic in the playoffs so far has just been damn near unstoppable. And the way that he's able to affect Denver's offense, to get them in a position to where they, they could be able to succeed, he does it so nonchalantly. It looks like it's just a walk in the park hack at half of the time. There are times where he's hitting like these little five, 10 foot floaters and it looks like he's barely putting any effort into it. And yet he just does this with what I would say is grace out there on the court and just does it at a high level. And we will see whether or not that that continues going into this series against the Lakers. You juxtapose that with what Anthony Davis is doing. Anthony Davis has been phenomenal on both sides of the court for the Lakers offensively. He's put up some huge performances in their first two playoff series wins so far. Uh, the first one being against the Grizzlies, the latest one being against the Warriors. And not only that, he's been just as great on the defensive side, getting multiple blocks per game, essentially just eating up rebounds left and right, where he's getting at least 15, sometimes even 20 plus rebounds a game. And it's having a huge impact with what the Lakers are doing. I think you know, the premier matchup of the series is definitely going to be Anthony Davis versus Nikola Jokic. I think whoever gets the best of that one-on-one -on -one matchup, I think it will definitely give their team a boost in this series. And then essentially it's going to come down to what both teams are going to be able to do outside of their superstars. I mean, obviously, you know, when you look at Denver, you have Nikola Jokic, you have Jamal Murray. You know, those are going to be your two main guys that are going to lead you to the promised land. But you're going to have to look at guys like Bruce Brown, Aaron Gordon. Are these guys going to be able to step up and contribute at the way that they've been doing the first two series in which the Denver Nuggets have won? You juxtapose it with what the Lakers are doing. Obviously, Anthony Davis and LeBron James are going to lead the way. But they're going to have to get good, good contributions from guys like Austin Reeves, uh, Roy Hachimura, D'Angelo Russell. These players are going to be focal to what the Lakers could potentially do in this series. And with the way that the Lakers have played so far, if those role players step up to the magnitude that they, they've been displaying over the last couple of series, I think it will serve them well. And the same goes for Denver as well, simply just because Denver has looked pretty solid throughout these playoffs so far, and they look to continue that. I should also mention, you know, I know Kev has, uh, has had some words to say about Michael Porter Jr., He's essentially going to be that third option behind Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray. Can he be able to step up in huge moments for Denver to be able to get them past LA in the series? It just depends on how effective LA's defense is. LA has done a pretty good job defensively against the Grizzlies and the Warriors in their first two series. Can they be able to maintain it against the Nuggets? Time will tell. But... When it comes to just my overall prediction for this series, I think more times than not, I'm going to actually side with the Nuggets in this one. You know, I'll put my bias to the side here just because I'm a Lakers fan. I think what the Lakers are going to struggle with in this series is out is the altitude in Denver. It may not happen in every single game, but there may be one game in particular where I think the altitude gets him. And it might hinder LeBron a little bit simply just because you know, LeBron is getting up there in age. He's 38 years old, and he's put a bunch of minutes on his body. And there have been times where I've looked at LeBron in the playoffs, and you could you could definitely tell that he's conserving a little bit more energy in this playoff run compared to years past. And I think it's just because I think that age and attrition is starting to get to him, not to the point where he can't be effective. It's just he has to manage it a little bit more than he has in years past. And I think in this series, I think the altitude may play a factor where he may get a little bit more tired. There could even be the possibility of, of cramps. 
who knows? It's just, that's going to be something that I'm going to focus on with LeBron in particular. It could hinder the Lakers a little bit. They have to adjust to that altitude uh, once they get out to Denver. But I think Denver, this is this is their year. I think with the way that Nikola Jokic has been playing, the way that Jamal Murray has been playing, they've been getting good contributions from the role players. They are the younger team here. Granted, they don't have the playoff experience that LeBron and Anthony Davis have in regards to winning championships. But I think as long as they play good complementary basketball like they have in their first two series and they continue it against the Lakers, I think they will probably wrap up this series in six games. There is a potential that this series could go seven. I, I'm not going to count out against it. It's just, I think Denver is primed for a finals run this year. I think the only way the Lakers get to the finals this year is they have to play outstanding defense against Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray to really stifle that Denver Nuggets offense and essentially make Denver's role players beat them. And as long as the Lakers could probably score around 100 to 105 points a game in the process, I think that's their formula for success. Kind of make these games a little bit more grimier, a little bit more gutsy in a way. But I think overall, this is going to be a great series. I'm looking forward to it since it starts on Tuesday. And at the end of the day, I just want a good series. If the series goes seven games, I'm all for it. But when it comes to my overall prediction of the series, I got the Nuggets winning the series in six games. Just my opinion on it. I mean, obviously, I'm usually not in full agreement, but I will kind of share the same sentiments to an extent with my partner. I think Denver wins this series. I don't necessarily know how long it's going to be. I don't think it's going to be a sweep. I don't think it's going to be a gentleman's sweep. So I think it's safe to say six, but if it did go seven, I wouldn't be surprised. Obviously, I'd favor Denver, especially because not only the altitude, just overall home court advantage. If this has to go to game seven in Denver, altitude, Braun and AD got the mileage on them throughout most of these series. I think this is going to be a good one. Now, the matchup that everybody's going to talk about is obviously AD and Jokic. You know, can Jokic average a triple-double and dominate the defensive strength that Anthony Davis has shown us throughout this entire postseason. Is Anthony Davis going to be able to keep up with uh, Jokic's physicality? Uh, but I'm looking at the supporting cast of the Denver Nuggets. Not Jamal Murray in particular, but Michael Porter Jr., Catavius Caldwell-Pope, um, Aaron Gordon. How are those players going to be able to step up, right? How are the bench players of the Denver Nuggets going to step up? Bruce Brown and and the remainder of their bench, because of course in my mind I'm I'm I don't have the bench lineup in front of me, but I'm just looking at it from an overall perspective. You are going to need massive contributions from other players because they are going to hone in on getting the ball out of Nikola Jokic's hands. I mean, you have versatile defenders like A. D. Vanderbilt. They're gonna be able to guard multiple positions, right? I just need Denver to hit open shots. If you were going to collapse in the post, double Jokic, deny him the ball, you were going to have to leave somebody open. Somebody, and I highly doubt that that one person is going to be um, Jamal Murray because we all know that Jamal Murray can go for 30, 40 points on any given night. Michael Porter Jr. has the potential and the capabilities. I know I kind of ragged on him a week or two ago, but he needs to find a way to step up and get into a rhythm consistently because he's a walking mismatch. He's 6'10", 6'11" can shoot over the top of pretty much most of the Lakers, and he has a pretty solid jump shot when he gets it going. He can also finish at the rim, but I'm going to need Denver to play good defense as well. I think Aaron Gordon is going to be one of the X factors because we all kind of looked at him as somebody that when he got to Denver, it was kind of like, oh, he's just somebody that can dunk. He's developed a mid-range jump shot. He's found a way to get better on defense. He was kind of the, one of the contributing factors that guarded KD, albeit KD still averaged over 28 points a game in the series. But he found a way to make it difficult, contest shots. Again, he's physical, he's tall, he's long. He can find a way, and I think that he's going to unfortunately draw the assignment of guarding LeBron James just because of the nature of the, the lineup that uh, the Lakers run. I don't know how that's going to go, but we'll kind of see how that goes over time. Overall... I got if is Lonnie Walker going to be able to repeat the success that he did for the Lakers? I know I just flipped, but I'm just saying, obviously, I went on and on and on about Denver, so I'm, I'm switching it over to LA. Is Lonnie Walker going to be able to contribute off the bench? Is Austin Reeves going to find a way to continue the stroke that he's had in games five and six of the Western semifinals? Is D'Angelo Russell going to get enough touches to where he's going to get into a rhythm throughout that series? 
is Rui Hachimura going to come back down to earth, or should I say come back to reality of what he was putting on in the first round? Because the show that he put on in the first round was absolutely incredible. He significantly cooled off in the second round. We the, like The Lakers need him to be consistent coming off the bench. Is Jared Vanderbilt going to be benched because of his offensive liabilities? We don't know. What 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 is you know Darvin Ham going to be able to do? What 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 lineup is he going to put out there in front of you? Is Dennis Schroeder going to be a viable factor here? There's so many overlooming questions. Anthony Davis's health is one. How they're going to guard Jokic overall is going to be a big one. And can LA keep up with the firepower of the Nuggets when they get it going? Because when Jokic gets people involved, man, the Nuggets are damn near unstoppable. Because if you're going to have to chase out, close in on Jokic, kick out to the corner, that defense is consistently going to be rotating. Someone's going to be open if you're done, if it's done right. And we all know the chemistry with the Denver Nuggets is absolutely impeccable. So again, for me, the X factors or those outlying factors for this series to, to be competitive... Can the Denver Nuggets supporting cast outside of Jokic and Jamal Murray be consistent? And can Anthony Davis and LeBron James find a way to carry this team to the NBA Finals? It's going to be a good series. They're going to be good matchups all across the board. I'm just looking forward to, like my partner said, something competitive. And I just want to see, can Braun actually do it? Is the script authentic is it real is it going to be blatantly obvious with fouls being called one way is it going to be entertaining is it going to be blowout for blowout i have no idea but the fact of the matter is you got multiple hall of famers on the court at the same time and i believe it is going to be one of the better western conference finals matchups that we've seen in a little bit